with the announcements, let's get to our program. Today, we are delighted to welcome Janet Keating McNaughton as our speaker. She will address us on the subject of how to create a location resource guide. Creating a resource guide enables genealogists to undertake reasonably exhaustive research to answer specific research questions in a particular location. Ms. McNaughton will focus on Pennsylvania as her example. She has prepared a comprehensive handout and I believe the link to the handouts in the chat. Janet Keating McNaughton, JD, is a retired lawyer who worked for over 30 years in Arizona, primarily as a prosecutor for the Arizona Attorney General's Office and the Maricopa County Council's Office. For over 25 years, she has been researching her family's history. The majority of her own family research is concentrated in Pennsylvania. Her research, uh, her ancestors came from foreign countries and stayed in Pennsylvania until her parents and her husband's parents moved to Arizona. Janet has attended courses at the Genealogical Research Institute of Pittsburgh, the Salt Lake Institute of Genealogy, and the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. Her research trips include visits to Washington, D.C., the Family History Library in Salt Lake, and to government offices and historical and genealogical societies throughout Pennsylvania. From 2014 to, tw to tw 2014 to 2019, she served as president of the Tempe chapter of the Family History Society of Arizona. She and her husband currently reside in Berks County, Pennsylvania, where her son, daughter-in-law, and grandsons also reside. We are extremely honored to have Janet McNaughton with us today. Please join me in giving Ms. McNaughton a warm Zoom welcome. Hello. Well, I want to thank uh, the Genealogical Society of Santa Cruz County and the um, Santa Cruz Public Library for making this meeting possible. Uh, I also would like to thank uh, you for choosing to spend time and attend this presentation. You have a lot of choices about how to spend your time. And I am honored that you choose to spend the next hour plus with me. Thank you. So, um, so I wanted to start out with the introduction about what the next hour or so is going to entail. I'll speak about the goals in a moment. About the handout, the handout, there is no copyright. I'm not claiming any copyright uh, protection for that. My hope is that you will use it. And it already, I have things I want to add, uh, things I would change. And I want it to be a model for you, the, especially the Pennsylvania um, part of it. It's There's a lot of links in it. There is creativity to it, but I give you that creativity. And I can't copyright links. I can't copyright the, refer the references to all these different facts uh, and wouldn't want to. Uh, as far as the PowerPoint slides go, uh, I also would encourage you to take photos take screenshots. Uh, I have no, no copyright intention for them. And in fact, as we go along, there's a few of them where I didn't include something in the handout and I'm asking, uh, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and, and uh, save this information because I think it's valuable. Uh, we're going to, I'm asking that the questions go in the chat. You perhaps want to start the that chat um, with something that like a cue, so uh, to help Sarah see what which are the questions and which are comments, and we're going to discuss them at the end. And finally, about future action, I'm a, a genealogy education junkie, and I attend a lot of presentations myself. And the element that is missing, I think, in my own life, and I perhaps in yours, is that I, I get excited, I get information, and then I don't follow through. Uh, and 
I'm, this is something I'm working on. It's something that I hope you would be interested in. Not only that you spend this hour, but that when you find things that will be helpful to you, you consider future action. So the goals that I have set, the first three um, we're, are, are following the handout. I'm going to be describing how location resources fit, uh, resource guides fit into the research process. Uh, so then we're going to compare available resource guides to creating your own, because uh, there are research guides out there. I think it's a, a valuable exercise to create your own, but we're going to, uh, that's something that we're going to discuss and compare. Finally, uh, well, we're also going to review a sample Pennsylvania resource guide. That's the last um, pages. The first two pages are about this, um, about setting it up. And then the last part of the handout is this sample Pennsylvania resource guide. It is only a sample. It's not, it, uh, it's not finished by any means. And basically, I think they would never be finished. Uh, but uh, we're going to look at that sample resource guide. And I urge you to consider, you don't have to have Pennsylvania ancestors to be interested and get something out of this talk. All, almost all of the resources have a component for other states. So a place that would have a Pennsylvania page is also going to have an Ohio page and an Indiana page. Um, and many of them have uh, uh, international pages, like uh, for Canadian research, for example. Finally, and this is the part that you're going to have to decide, I hope to inspire you to include resource guides in your research process. So look really quickly, this is something that I'm sure you're familiar with, family search, and there's lots of descriptions of the research process. But basically, we're going to identify what we want to know. Uh, well, what do we have? What, what do we have in our home sources? What do we want to learn about? And then we select the records to search. The resource guide is important to that element of the research process. Then you obtain and research the record. And finally, you use the information. The genealogical proof standard, which is referred to in the title of the talk, Number one is you conduct reasonably exhaustive research. It's not exhaustion, it's exhaustive, meaning complete. We're trying to look at the best records um, and all of the best records to um, make find our genealogical proof. I'm going to take, I'm, I'm going to time it. Uh, just a couple minutes to say, this is my soapbox moment. I'm going to urge you to consider as part of that family search uh, research process that part of use the information is to preserve and share your research now and for the future. Your ancestors want to be found. And many of us have had the experience of something magical happens and we see we find something that we are was unexpected but often when we find that ancestor we then put them back in the binder file cabinet or pile of papers we found them but we're not putting them out in the world please if you're interested in this Please take a screenshot of this of this page or a photo. It's um, it it these this is not in the this is not in the handout. The reason there's a, a gravestone, I took that picture. Um, my own um, and somebody wants to be found. The one that was most profound to me is I'm desperately trying to take a picture of a of a cemetery of a cemetery stone it's a cloudy day it's a very dark picture it's not coming out it's in 
it's in Pennsylvania. I live in Arizona at the time. This is my opportunity. And the clouds parted. And it, it, it was almost like angels sing. Uh, I really felt that that ancestor wanted to be found. So back on topic, we're going to, we're looking at um, the reasons for using a, a, a uh, location resource guide. None of us have infinite time and none of us have infinite energy. And we do not want to have to reinvent the wheel. We don't want to have to reinvent um, a list of records every single time we're doing research. And so a location resource guide is very important to save that time and energy. My husband's family, God bless them, they came from foreign countries and 98% of them stayed in Clarion County uh, their entire lives. Some of them started out in Venango County uh, and then the the county line changed, but it's, it's Clarion County now. So I have to know once, what are all the resources I have available in Clarion County? I do not want to have to do that every single time I'm researching one of my husband's ancestors. We're also what want to be interested, we're interested in the location and the time period. Um, and, and that allows us to prepare for that reasonably exhaustive research. How are we going to know when it's what, that we are looking at the best records and that we are, have looked at all of them or most of them or what's available? That's, those are all true whether you have a resource guide created by someone else or by yourself, but also if you create it yourself, you will retain it better and you can tailor it to your per particular family's interests and, find, and you can expand it with new information. As I worked on this handout um, in the last few weeks, many days I found additional resources that I could then plug into it. After I closed down the handout um, and was working on the PowerPoint, I could still find new resources. In the handout, I've uh, given you a section on information about resource guides. Um, I'm a big fan of Diana Elder and Nicole Dyer, their mother and daughter. They have a website, familylocket.com. They've written a book, Research Like a Pro, and chapter three is all about location research. Their website includes blogs and podcasts, and they very generously share information about all the elements of Research Like a Pro. And in the handout, I've described um, uh, or highlighted a couple of them for you about uh, location guides. Carrie Taplin. A certified genealogist has a genealogy pants website and blog, and she did a wonderful series on building a location guide. And it that series starts uh, May 5th of 2021. It went, I think, 10 issues, one a week, and it has an Ohio emphasis. So um, and of, of course, is a little bit different take than what I'm talking about. Uh, as you do a genealogy education, you're going to find repeated themes uh, from, from different talks. And basically, all of the speakers um, are providing variations on a theme, uh, such as the resource guides. And this one is my uh, variation on that theme. There's many uh, possible formats for your guide. And the most important is the format you will use. Um, the sample I've provided in the handout is a Word document. It's a PDF now, but you can switch it back to a Word document, I understand. Uh, and that's what I'm most comfortable with. I have links in it 
they all were entered in the last few in the last week last few days and um knocking on wood they should all work of course we can uh go to a um the trusty paper and and pen uh excel if you've if you've got that that knowledge and finally pinterest is just is another um, possibility i want i wanted to show you my uh my pinterest page i actually have 14 pins on this but this was not an example of a, a format i would use uh i i set it and forgot it until i was preparing this talk it's not really mentioned in the handout, but I wanted to emphasize to you that your location guide, you can create multiple ones, or you can have one like a Pennsylvania plus counties plus cities, but you wanna consider jurisdictional levels, uh, the local level, so the city, the borough, the township, the county level, the state level, and then of course the country level, because records for your ancestors and mine were created at every single level. And for us to have reasonably exhaustive research, we're gonna wanna check all of those levels. So we go back to that research process. We're going to do, we're gonna have a research question we're going to work from the known to the unknown, and we're going to be as specific as possible as to time, place, and person. And where that's essential to identify available records for the time and the place. Uh, mentioned in the handout, and one of my personal favorites is this Family Search Wiki record selection table. And so it here's an example it's uh, if you're looking for the birth date and place of course you want to look at vital records but it depends on the time period vital records might not be available you're looking for church records census will give you often um, a, a, a birth a date range um, town records and so um, I offer that as a example of a place to help you um, choose some records to search for. So the next part of the handout uh, I have on page two, it's the other state, other PA resource guides. And that's kind of a list of um, already done research guides. Uh, and so that um, uh, I realized later, as I was as preparing further, that hmm, that kind of overlaps with the resources that I'm providing or the links that I'm providing under the Pennsylvania overview, which is the beginning of that uh, sample Pennsylvania. Uh, research guide uh, research guide that starts on page three so you can you can create your own resource guide or you can use an existing guide and i think my preference is a combination because as you see i have a number of these guides these like compilations of records and references they're in my, my guide, so I'm getting the advantage of what they've already done. But then I also have the element of I get to add additional things to it. It's not a static document. It's a living document as I find additional resources. Um, I want to highlight. Oh, so my per so what I'm going to do, there's too many. I can't go website by website from what's in the handout now. So we're going to talk about different topics. And we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about um, highlighting certain websites. If you go, if you have the handout, if you're looking through the handout with me and you have questions about one of the uh, one of the elements of the 
handout that I'm not going to I'm not talking about in this PowerPoint, then let's talk about that at the end. But ask me a question about it. I am not pretending that I'm an expert on, on any or all of these um, websites. Um, like you, I'm a lifelong learner and I'm I'm still learning about these uh, resources, but we can certainly talk about any of them that are here in the handout or other ones that you have discovered for your own research. Library of Congress has two uh, Pennsylvania research guides. They're both mentioned in the handout, but I wanted to uh, let you know that the uh, this one, they're both written so the one on the handout, with it's, oh, it's on page two of the handout. Both were written by the librarian Candace Buchanan, and that actually appears lower down on the page of the, that you, so you're seeing a top of a page here. Um, but the local history one, they were both created in 2020. This local history one was updated March 29th of 2022. So I suspect this one is the uh, is the primary one. I have not compared the two of them to find out if they're uh, where they're the same and where they're different. Um, but some of the language even in the beginning is different. So it may be that there are some variations between the two. The next uh, one that I want to highlight is uh, the Newberry, Newberry Public Library in Chicago. They have uh, research guides and they have one for Pennsylvania genealogy. This is mentioned on page two of the handout. Um, it's, it's a book. It is a list of books uh, and they have not every state, but they also have other states available on their website. So under Pennsylvania overview, I mixed in um, recorded presentations with other uh, formats. And I think if I were if I were doing this again, I would separate out the recorded presentations and um, so here, here you have a list. These are all included in the, in the handout. I wanted to take a moment to talk about this Ancestry Academy because it's hidden. And there's actually a lot of information underneath um, that open page of Ancestry. Most of us, I suspect, don't go to help. And then these are waypoints. So you, you open up Ancestry. Uh, and then you have choices, so then you choose help. And then under help, you choose support center. And under support center, you, you choose search. And here's, here's the search. Under search, you have search tips, search resources, finding records. I recommend you uh, do a little um, jumping around in here because there really are some valuable uh, pieces to this that are, like I said, uh, mostly hidden from, from view. Here's uh, just a part of, of the um, Ancestry search resources that they have um, under, under that um, category. And here's the Ancestry Academy. So we're going to click on that Ancestry Academy course, we might be tempted by Italian records, or we might be tempted by the, the census record, French records, but, but no, we're going to go Ancestry Academy. And from there, we come to the Ancestry Academy, and there are lots of choices. And I've just taken a few little snips here. Of course, there's a Pennsylvania genealogical research. That's that's our topic. There's 12 videos to that. Um, it's a presentation by Michael Lacopo, uh, uh, who's a uh, doctor of veterinary medicine, but also a wonderful uh, genealogy speaker and writer. But then I just wanted to let you see that there's all these other um, options. Now, in truth, 
these are not research guides. You, you would have to take notes from these hand, these uh, materials. Um, I offer them as an alternative to watching too many British murder mysteries on TV, which is my um, vice of choice. Uh, we could actually learn something uh, while we're watching. So now still on the overview of state resources. And again, I urge you to consider these are not just, these are not Pennsylvania centric. These are, these have uh, resources for countries, for other states and have, uh, have a lot of value wherever you are researching. Pennsylvania Gen Web is Pennsylvania, but there are Gen Web pages for every state. So Cindy's list, real quick. Uh, hopefully, we're all familiar with Cindy's list, but we can be, we can, we can forget. We can become complacent. We can decide that oh, we're too um, advanced for Cindy's list. Well, Cindy's list is Google for genealogists, and it this this slide shows you the category under a state, all these categories appear for every single state. There are also country pages. And for Pennsylvania right now, it's 4,561 links. And Cindy works very hard every day to uh, make those the, this website and make those links um, work. So you're going to hear a lot about the Family Search Research Wiki. Um, I'm a big, big fan, and I think you should be as well. But here's the start of a page for Pennsylvania United States genealogy. Uh, every 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 state has this. Countries have this. And look at here. We have the step by step Pennsylvania research. We have how to find birth records, marriage records. Uh, research strategies. Um, so anyway, very important. So if we go further down, well, actually, this is a sidebar, but this shows you all the wiki topics that go with Pennsylvania. And this list is the same for every state. Finally, we're I want to mentioned this learning center. So again, going back to that opportunity, oops, to watch videos under the learning center, we have four specific uh, videos about Pennsylvania, land records, court and probate records, vital and church records, and finally an overview. Of course, we want to be cons we we want to pay attention to the family search catalog. The catalog is the same. These topics are the same for every state, and you can see uh, the um, breadth of information that's provided there. We're still talking about Pennsylvania overviews. Uh, Roots Web is where the Ancestry Wiki now resides. And two of the elements of the Ancestry Wiki are the source, this is a published volume, the source and the Red Book. And the source covers uh, genealogy record types and the Red Book covers um, government sources. And here are the Ancestry Wiki top Pennsylvania topics. And these apply, again, to every state. Another resource is, again, overview, the Family History Guide. Uh, and this is, it's not a Church of Latter-day Saints site, but it is, uh, it was started and it's maintained by members of the Church of Latter-day Saints, and they have a lot of links to um, resources there. They have guides for every state, and they have goals for every state. This applies to um, 
every, uh, Pennsylvania, but it applies as well. So they have a section about maps and gazetteers. They have a section about newspapers, additional websites for research. So this is another uh, good source for overview, overall information and specific information. Here again, here's another one, PA Gen Web. Again, there are pages for every state. And we can see that there are many, many topics under Pennsylvania Gen Web. So we're now we're leaving the overview section and talking about the statutes. And this is this is one of the slides I, I'm suggesting that you add uh, that you take a picture of or that a screenshot because this was not included in the handout. I just discovered this, I think it was today, maybe yesterday. Um, Penn State University Libraries has have a lot of wonderful resources. Take a look at their library guides and they have one on law in Pennsylvania. Here is, here is a, a, a bit of that opening uh, website on a uh, guide on uh, Pennsylvania law. And then you have the choices of constitution, statutes, case law, et cetera, and other useful resource gu research guides. <laughs> Pardon me. If, um, if I were doing archive societies and libraries, again, I would separate them out. Um, two of the most important are the National Archives in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania Archives. Uh, Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh has a wonderful Pennsylvania department. And uh, it includes a large number of microfilm uh, um, newspaper um, copies. Also the Pennsylvania State Library, of course, uh, the National Archives of, uh, well, the National Archives uh, has a Pennsylvania presence at Philadelphia. Every state has a, um, a regional archives associated with its records, its, its federal records, but not all of the state records are at the regional centers. I learned it looking for um, information about a federal project in, in Pennsylvania called Norvelt. It was a depression era uh, special community for uh, lower income people. And my, my mother's family lived there, but those records are not in Philadelphia. They are in uh, Washington or Maryland, depending on which site they are. Uh, so, and then of course, Pennsylvania State Archives, they are currently open for limited periods, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, but they also have a very robust section of researching online. And for any of these resources, I would suggest to you, uh, libraries, take a look at the website and find out whether they do have a uh, online uh, research capability. Pennsylvania Societies and Libraries, Historical Society of Pennsylvania has a very big library in Philadelphia. Genealogy Society of Pennsylvania is also in Philadelphia. I want to take a few moments to talk about local societies. And there's the Berks County Genealogical Society. I met Gail Burke um, online through the Chula Vista Genealogy Society and mentioning that I was watching from Berks County. Uh, so we got to communicating about a Berks County connection that Gail has. Well, Berks County Genealogical Society has a library. It is open every seven days a week, which is very unusual for Pennsylvania. And uh, it has ver some very unique records. These small societies, uh, the members 
especially early on. They had a lot of energy. They went to cemeteries and they walked the cemeteries and wrote cemetery books. They uh, got hold of church records and they index church records. Some of these resources are unique and they're not, it's not all online. In fact, these small libraries, it's, it's almost certainly not online, but uh, these are treasures that we need to support both with membership and with our hours. I don't really have Berks County, uh, many Berks County ancestors, but I think of it as paying it forward for me to help out that society. And then hopefully someone else is helping in Clarion County and Cambria County and Allegheny County. I just want to, uh, oops, let's see. No, okay. So um, here's a, a page, uh, an opening page from the Historical Society of Pennsylvania with an explanation of how to, of, of oh, I'm sorry. This is a, this is actually, I should get rid of this. This is a uh, slide about a um, course. And I took this course, uh, but it's not offered this summer. Okay, so sorry about that, but the Historical Society of Pennsylvania is a wonderful resource and their website should be reviewed. Um, the Tulpahawken, it this one is goes back to my discussion of the um, of small societies. This Tulpahawken Settlement Historical Society is actually in Berks County. Um, it's in here in part because I can pronounce Tulpahawken and it took me a long time to learn that. But this, this little library has over 10,000 records and its catalog is um, online. And this is an area with a very big German presence. Uh, so if you have German Pennsylvania uh, ancestors, this might be where you'd find them. Next category and uh, is is books, and we have the these are this is all page six. We have these uh, listed in the handout, and uh, for the Allen County Genealogy Center and how to find this list is in the handout. But this is a example of something I just found because I attended a a talk from somebody who was who worked at the Allen County Public Library and she alerted us as part of that talk to these um, research guide pages and there's the Pennsylvania one. It's a selective list of books but important to have a list of books which we could then apply. So these books are at the Allen County Genealogy Center. They don't circulate but you have a name of a book which you can then look for at the family search digital library the family history uh, digital library um, has many many libraries that participate including that historical society of pennsylvania allen county public library byu this is an old slide but it, um, I could not find in the current website a, a, a simplified list of the, um, the uh, libraries that participate. So here's a, a, an example of the Family Search Digital Library. Uh, and it, this is described in your, in your handout, but you can see that there are 232,791 books with the keyword Pennsylvania. Well, we're gonna have to um, refine that search, but it just gives you an idea of the breadth of what's in the digital library. So you can read these in, uh, in, your, in the comfort of your home, uh, wearing your bunny slippers. Hathi Trust is another way to find books. It is a digital library and it is a partnership of many academic and research institutions. So you can search 
their collection and you can find often, of, of course, especially the uh, older, older volumes, which are what we were interested in many, many times. Uh, there's also a help page for how to use it. And I just wanted to show you an example. I, like I said, I have a lot of Clarion County uh, ancestors through my husband. I could go to Hathi Trust, type in a search for the history of Clarion County, and now I have an every page um, option to watch, uh, to read this book. The World Cat is a very, very important resource, and I hope that you, it is part of your arsenal. And if it's not, I would suggest that you add it. You can choose to search for this. It's, a, it's allegedly the world's largest library catalog. It involves many, many, many um, libraries. We can search for books here. Oops. And so we looked for, I looked for Pennsylvania land records. And you can see I have 1,943 books under that search. Uh, but I also have that very first one is the Pennsylvania land records. It's referred to in the, um, in your handout under land records. It's the uh, most comprehensive book on Pennsylvania land records. I go to WorldCat and I have two parts of this WorldCat that I wanted to show you. One is I can enter my zip code. Now remember, I'm in, I'm in Pennsylvania and the Reading Area Community College has this book and that's three miles away. Uh, another feature on the uh, catalog page is find a copy or get a copy for some uh, for some books this also includes a, a link to amazon and to abe books which is owned by uh, amazon so this is a, a a wonderful way to find books and you may check and see whether some of these books and these libraries circulate and you could use interlibrary loan now, the next section of the handout is on published Pennsylvania archives. I'm going to spend very little time on this because while it's a Pennsylvania uh, sample resource guide, so it's important that it's there, um, this is something that's very, very special to Pennsylvania. Um, Elisa Scalise Powell has written the description. There are two places to find full, uh, the published Pennsylvania archives in addition to um, uh, library uh, copies. Berks County Genealogy Society has most of the volumes. Uh, the description here, and this is in your handout, dis, uh, these are multiple multiple volumes, they include military records, they include marriage records, they include birth records. It's a it's just a wonderful, very specialized collection. Ancestry also has it, um, but they have fewer volumes. And they uh, did do not include the um, colonial series. Uh, so if you uh, go to fold three, this is part Full three has a number of free records. You, you have a registration, you register, but you, this is not a paid, this is not access to the paid subscription part. Uh, but, but you can see in this list, we have Pennsylvania archives and it's free. George Washington's correspondence is free. Navy and Corps officers is free. So that's um, an aspect of Fold 3 that you may be interested in. Pennsylvania Vital Records, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, uh, but I, it is described in detail on pages 7 through 8 of the handout. Um, this, is, this applies to all of um, all, any state or country um, that you could create a timeline of records. And the vital records uh, 
in Pennsylvania, that would be, you, there is a period 1852 to 1854, where the, pen, where the state said to counties, we want you to collect birth, marriage, death. And the counties sort of yawned and some of them did it and some of them didn't, but there was no mechanism to enforce it. And so in, by 1854, the state said, oh, never mind. As genealogists, we wish that that, that had, had actually worked, uh, but there are some records for this 1852 to 1854 period, and there are databases on ancestry. 1906 to the present are the state records, and they are available on ancestry. Note in the handout, there are more records available through uh, the um, through the directly through Pennsylvania, then there are available on Ancestry, and take a look at the handout for that. Also, county records. There's a timeline for that. They are actually earlier than the state records, and city records are also earlier. Church records, now I have to, I'm, I'm getting to the part where I have to even talk faster. So I'm gonna rely heavily on that family search wiki. Because remember, I don't wanna reinvent the wheel and this, these um, entries in this research wiki are very comprehensive. What I've provided in the handout are lists of uh, different denominations. It's not a complete list and places where you could find the records uh, or find access to the records um, through these for these different denominations. Um, highlighting Catholics, Philadelphia uh, has, the Philadelphia Archdiocese has made a agreement with Find My Past and there is a Catholic record set on Find My Past for Philadelphia. For Pittsburgh, they actually have a research center where you make queries. Um, my ethnic group section, I probably would not, I would um, probably rename it um, in the future, uh, but uh, it it's there. There should be some section about dealing with um, different, say, cultural groups. On the Family Search Wiki, where you find those records are under Pennsylvania Online Genealogy Records. There's an African American reference, and then there's a whole research wiki about US African American online genealogy records. Also, cultural groups. Um, are under this Pennsylvania Online Genealogy Records. And uh, this is the cultural immigration groups continued. Land records. La Pennsylvania is a land grant state. The land descriptions are meets and bounds. That means running from the large rock to the oak tree to you know so many uh, oh, chains from one place to another. Uh, it's not an easy system. Uh, and there's certainly no squared off um, parts of it. The uh, Family Search Wiki on Research Wiki on land and property is very comprehensive. And then we also have that book uh, that I mentioned. Um, but you can, you can get it paperback, you can get it used. Um, I have a copy just behind me. Uh, maps. Now under maps, I have ancestor tra tracks. Actually it's listed under ancestor tracks is a website that I would really urge you to use if you are a state, a Pennsylvania state person, um, because they have, they have um, land ownership maps. So that's why it appears under the land um, aspect of the resource guide, sample resource guide. And it also has just maps in general. So 
I imagine that there are similar web map sites for different states, uh, but this ancestor tracks is a special for Pennsylvania. Maps of the world, which is referred to on page four as, a, as an overview source, but obviously it, um, its main draw, uh, draw is, is its maps. It also has descriptions and facts about Pennsylvania. Um, but maps are very, very useful. Um, this, is a, this is one that's great for across the country. It is uh, also from the Newberry Library in uh, Chicago, this atlas of county, historical county boundaries. You can go to any state and see how the boundaries changed. Pennsylvania started with three counties. It now has 67 counties. And so I was referring to my husband's ancestors in Clarion County. Alexander McNaughton was, his will appears in Venango County. He lived and died in Venango County. He was buried in Venango County. But if you visit his grave, you go to Clarion County because after he died, the part of Venango County uh, that where he was buried became part of Clarion County. So it's very important to know about the counties. What was the county at the time of the event? Uh, to look at his copied will for Alexander McNaughton, you go to Venango County. That's the place where the will was posted. Uh, his other, uh, other records appear in Clarion County. But this is a wonderful map and it's available in uh, PDF. So you can download this map and the value of that, I have it in, I have it in physical form, but this is very, very densely written. So if you have it as a PDF and you can enlarge it, then you can look and see the detail to all the boundary changes. Uh, we've got, no, I missed, sorry. Okay. Well, we have military records. And again, I'm referring you back to the, pen, to the uh, research wiki for military records. There's a few more records that are available listed in the, um, in the uh, handout newspapers, wonderful resources, and Pennsylvania is working hard to get um, newspapers online. Pennsylvania State Library has a newspaper's digital collection, and that, yeah, I, what I, why I'm pausing, I'm sorry. It may or may not be in the handout. Um, I think it is in the handout, but this Pennsylvania State Library newspapers collection. And then Penn State is also doing uh, a newspaper archive and Penn State's library system is doing a lot of work um, on many fronts to preserve the history of Pennsylvania. This Penn State newspaper archive, there. It's a full text searchable newspaper database. That's what's highlighted here. And it's, uh, and it's available from all 67 counties and they are expanding it all the time. There are other newspaper resources that are referred to in the handout. And one of the best or, and one of the uh, ones that is, is most comprehensive for the whole country is chronicling America, historic American newspapers. There are digital collections, but there are also, uh, it gives you record, it tells you what newspapers were available. In, uh, this use, newspaper directory uh, will tell you about the newspapers that existed, whether or not they have been digitized. Finally, or close to finally, we're on uh, probate records. And Cindy's list comes through again with uh, Pennsylvania wills and probates. Uh, 
But the Family Search Wiki also has P Pennsylvania probate records and I um, as a topic, but I want to talk to I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Family Search records that apply to uh, probate. But I, I urge you to consider how this would apply to your state, your country. Um, for probate records, for, Pen for um, Pennsylvania probate records, these are unindexed records in, um, uh, in Family Search. And it's 3,200,560 images. And then it says, browse through 3,200,000. Be brave. Gird your loins. Go ahead and click on that. And what you're going to find is, oh, it's not just 3, 000, 3 million. I've got it divided up by county. And then I've, I, I go to the Clarion County uh, choice and I find will books and notice I have them by year and by last name this is this is more doable this is like when we used to go and get microfilm reels and we used to spin the microfilm reels that's what this is and that's doable and so I wanted to show you a little bit of success one of my husband's ancestors is Jacob Armagost, and here is his record. Out of all those 3 million plus images, I was able to find Jacob Armagost's copied will. Uh, at the end of the handout, there's also some uh, resources for Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. I'm just highlighting historic Pittsburgh. But the, all of the websites I, um, I thought were valuable that are included in the handout. Um, I've also included blogs and Facebook groups at the very, very end. So I've talked about a living document. I've been working with this material for the last few weeks. I originally gave this talk in October in 2016. I gave it again in 2017, but it's been a, it's been a side since then. I, I essentially redid it totally this time and was amazed at all the wonderful things that have, have been published. But looking through it, and, and what I provided to you, I'm thinking, oh, I needed to add an occupations or employ an employment uh, section to the guide. I should have a state timetable. I talked about a timetable of records, but I should have a, a timetable of um, significant events for Pennsylvania. I will tell you that I attended that uh, week-long session with the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. And I have a timeline for Pennsylvania that probably runs 25 pages. It's double-spaced, but uh, that's not really going to be workable for my uh, resource guide. Uh, but something, some timetable would be helpful. I'm asking you to take a, a picture of this slide for the taxation element of it, because I think I should have added a taxation uh, section to the resource guide. And yes, there is a Pennsylvania taxation research wiki article, but there's also um, on Ancestry, a Pennsylvania US direct tax list for 1798, but also the Pennsylvania US Septennial Census. This is a database, 1779 to 1863. Pennsylvania never did a state census. What it did was every seven years, they enumerated inhabitants for tax purposes and representation in government. And that description comes from ancestry from this database. Uh, so it's called a census, but it's really a tax list and should be included for anybody who's doing Pennsylvania research. Huh, I'll take a breath. I want to thank you for your time and your attention. I want to 
uh, share with you my best wishes for your happy and successful family research. I'm again on my soapbox asking you to share your findings with others. And finally, I'm asking you to consider preserving your stories. You are unique. You are family members to others. Imagine if you had something from your grandmother, from your mother, um, how valuable it would be to you. You wouldn't care about the spelling, the grammar. You would treasure the fa their thoughts. And so I would ask you to consider sharing your own stories. And with that, I will conclude and open it up for questions.